So you've chosen the WordPress Astra theme to build your website, and we can't thank you enough for that. Now, you may be using the free or pro version of Astra, but looking at the ton of options that Astra has to offer, you may feel overwhelmed. Where do you start? And what does each setting do? Should you use the free? or the pro version, and how to make the best of the WordPress Astra theme. So you've been looking on YouTube for a full-blown tutorial, but even more than that, you're looking for a reference that you can come back to whenever you feel stuck. Well, this is your lucky day, because this is the ultimate Astra WordPress theme masterclass. Hello, I'm Kay from the Astra theme team. Theme team? And in this video, I will help you set up Astra, import a ready-made design in just a few clicks. Next, we'll go through the Astra theme options for you to customize your website, and we'll take a look at the free and pro versions of Astra. And we'll also take a look at how you can change the default content of your website. By the end of this video, you will know how to set up the WordPress Astra theme and use it to build any type of website like a personal website, a business website, and even an e-commerce website. So how to use this video? Now this video may be a bit long, that's why we split the video into chapters that you can access within the YouTube player, or by clicking on the chapter links in the description of this video. We use it as a reference. Now Astra is free and will always be free, but it also comes with a pro version with additional features. So in order to avoid any confusion in this video, from time to time you may see some free and pro labels on screen. Also, when mentioned, you'll find links to additional resources like tutorials and documentation in the description of this video. But first of all, why should you choose the WordPress Astra theme? Well, not only has the Astra theme been voted best WordPress theme for the second year in a row, but if we ask Google what others say about it, we read that one of Astra's standout features is that it's super lightweight. On a fresh install with just the theme, an Astra site is only 37 kilobytes, with 7 HTTP requests. In the grand scheme of things, Astra is faster than 99% of WordPress themes, and you can build incredibly quick loading sites with Astra. And thus, it's no surprise that so many websites trust Astra. And with more than 4,800 five-star ratings on WordPress, 1,400 plus reviews on Trustpilot, the WordPress Astra theme comes as a giant but with unparalleled performance. With no jQuery loading, less than 50 kilobytes of resources, and just 0.5 seconds of loading time. Oh, and did I mention it comes free? So yeah, in case you were wondering, you made the right choice. Now let's answer some frequently asked questions. And let's start with what is the difference between Astra and Starter Templates? Well, that's pretty easy. Astra is a WordPress theme. And if we ask Google what is a WordPress theme, it's a group of files, graphics, style sheets, and code that dictates the overall appearance of your blog or website. Themes can control something as vast as your site's layout or as minute as your hyperlink colors. And of course, it's going to work with the WordPress platform only as the name says. Now, when it comes to starter templates, basically, they are ready-made designs for the Astra theme. So once you've installed Astra, Technically, you could start creating from scratch, but the starter templates are ready-made designs. We have more than 200, and it ranges from portfolio, you got beauty websites, you got restaurant websites, e-commerce websites, you name it. Now, if you want to access the premium templates within the starter templates, you need to get either the essential bundle or the growth bundle. Next, can you install starter templates on an existing website? And the answer is yes, and if you want more info, I will link to this blog post. Basically, once you're inside the WordPress editor, all you have to do is click on the template kit button, and then you can pick any design. So let me scroll down, let me pick this one. And then you can choose the page templates. So we can either import the whole website, and we see that in a moment, or you can just pick any page that you want and import it within the page. So for example, if I click on import service template, there you go, we've imported the template. Now I click on update. And if I click on preview and preview in a new tab, as you can see, I've imported my services template right below the existing content. Now, technically you could even import different designs from different kits on different pages on your website, but bear in mind that you do want to keep design consistency, so use it with a caution. And if you want to ensure design consistency, then it may be better to start from a fresh install and import a ready-made demo, like we're going to do in this video. 
So for the sake of this tutorial, let's imagine that you are an author and keynote speaker and you want to save thousands of dollars by creating a website where you can present yourself and sell your books and you want to do this with the WordPress Astra theme. So where do you start? So there are two ways we can do this and the first is to go to Appearance, Themes, then click on Add New, click on Upload Theme, choose File and select the zip file that you got from the Astra website. Then click on Install Now and click on Activate. And voila, Astra is installed and activated. Now the second way is to install the Astra theme via the WordPress interface and for that you want to go once again to Appearance, Themes, click on Add New and you should see the Astra theme right here. But if you can't find it, just click in the search box and just type Astra. Then click on Install and Activate. And voila, Astra is installed and activated and if we click on Visit Sites, our website is up and running with the default presentation. Next, how to install Astra Pro. So in WordPress, you want to hover over Plugins, click on Add New, then click on Upload Plugin, click on Choose File, and select the zip file that you received once you purchased Astra Pro. Click on Open and click on Install Now. Next, click on Activate Plugin. So the plugin is now activated and you get a prompt to activate your copy of Astra Pro. So click on Activate, paste your license that you received by email and click on Activate. And voila, your license is now activated. Next, if you want to activate the Pro Modules, you want to click on the Welcome tab. Then scroll down to the Astra Pro Module section. And here you can activate and deactivate any module that you want, or just click on Activate All or Deactivate All. And there you go. The Astra Pro Modules are now activated. Okay, next let me show you how easy it is to import professional ready-made designs in just a few clicks. And for that we'll be using a plugin called Starter Templates. Our Starter Templates library comes with more than 200 professional designs made by our team of experts. And it's pretty easy to find what you're looking for. As you can see, we have digital agencies, pet and animals, transport, roofing, cleaning, makeup and cosmetic, gym and fitness, you name it. You can either browse through the free or premium designs or you can look through the categories as I just shown you here in the navigation or you can use the search box. So let's look for an interior designer and as you can see we got a few designs here. Now you find a great selection of free and premium designs and if you'd like to level up by using our premium designs consider going pro. And more specifically you can access premium starter templates with our essential and growth bundles. So if you want to take a look, make sure you click on the link in the description below. Now to install starter templates from the WordPress interface, you want to go to Astra, click on Dashboard, and here in the Dashboard, look on the right hand side for the Useful Plugin section, you'll find starter templates and you can click on Install and Activate, or you can click on the Starter Templates tab, and then click on Install and Activate. You will be redirected automatically to this page, and click on build your website now. And here you can choose your favorite page builder. And please know that Astra is totally compatible with Elementor. Astra is actually one of the best WordPress themes that work with it. But in this video, we'll be using the block editor, also known as Gutenberg, but with a twist. Because we'll be using Spectra, a free WordPress page builder built on top of the WordPress default editor. Using Spectra helps eliminate problems like performance, compatibility issues, stability issues, as well as the high learning curve faced while using third-party builders. But more about that later. So for the time being, click on Block Editor. Okay, next we want to select a design either by browsing or we can use the search field or we can use the categories. And in our case, we know we want to create a bookstore. So I'm going to pick this category. And next, select the design that you want. I like this one, so I'm going to click on it. And here I can upload a logo, but we'll do that later. So click on skip and continue. And here you can select the colors that you want. So you have default colors that we see here, the default color palette. But in my case, I like this color palette. So I'm going to pick this one. And the same goes for the fonts. You can change the fonts, you can change the font pairs. And as you can see, the changes are reflected 
in the preview, but I'm just going to reset the style because I like the initial style. So click on continue and don't worry because we can change this later. Okay, next, before you click on the submit and build my website button, if you wanna help our team to serve you even better, you may want to fill in the info of this form and then just proceed to the next step. And now sit back, relax and enjoy the short flight. And during this time, the system is going to install everything that is required. So the plugins, the design, of course, so that it works exactly as the demo was showcased. And voila, your website is ready and it took just 48 seconds to build, for real. So now, of course, you can boast and click to tweet about your new website and then you can click on view your website. And voila, your bookstore e-commerce website is up and running. I told you it was gonna be easy, but of course I will show you how to customize your new website and how to change the content. But first, let's take a look at the Astra dashboard. So let's start from where we left off. If you are still on the screen, you wanna hover over the little icon here with the name of your website and click on dashboard. And as mentioned previously, during the starter template install, all the necessary plugins were installed like WooCommerce or WP Forms, for example. Now to access the Astra dashboard, you wanna hover over the Astra element in the navigation and click on dashboard. So first of all, here on top, identify the various tabs. We got welcome settings, starter templates, and free VS Pro, if you wanna know the difference between the free and the pro versions. Now here we are on the welcome tab, and on the welcome tab, you can start customizing right away. It will take you to the WordPress customizer that we'll see in a moment. Next, we have our quick settings section, and it also links to the customizer, but it links to specific options like colors, typography, header builder, footer builder. If you know exactly what you want to change, this is the quickest way to get to it. Next, we have our useful plugin section that you see here on the right hand side. And in this section, you see useful plugins that you may want to install for your website, like card flows, strip payments for Woo, card abandonment recovery, variations by card flows, and share triggers. All you have to do is click on install and activate. Okay, next we have the Astra Pro module section. So here I'm on the free version, so I cannot activate those modules. But as we saw previously, if you have Astra Pro, you can activate and deactivate all modules, or you can decide to activate each module one by one. Okay, next on the right hand side, you have links for priority support, join the community, and a way to rate us and show us some love. Next, at the bottom, you see the Astra integrations. And as you can see, Spectra has already been installed and activated by default when we install the starter template. And next to Spectra, you find other plugins like ShareCard and CardFlows that you can conveniently install straight from the dashboard. All you need to do is just click on Install and Activate. Okay, let's scroll back up. Next, let's click on the Settings tab. And here in the free version, we have the General tab and the performance tab. So as the name suggests, the performance tab is to help make your website faster. And we can do this by loading Google Fonts locally. So if you enable this option, it's going to download Google Fonts and save them to your server. So that can speed up your website and also help you comply with EU GDPR laws. Next, you may want to preload local fonts. So in that case, just enable the option. And what it's doing is that it's gonna load font files right away on page load that's gonna make your website even faster. But now from time to time, you may want to change some fonts or some styles. And in this case, you may want to flush local font files. And you do this by clicking on this button. Now, if we go in the pro version on the general tab, of course, you can put the license if we've done that previously, but you also have file generation. Now, I don't wanna to get too technical here, but if you don't know what CSS and JS are, you probably don't need this. But if you do, the good news is that if you're facing issues with style layout and color or other page elements, all you need to do is enable this option and click on regenerate assets. Next, the performance tab is the same as in the free version. But if you click on version control, that's really handy because you can roll back to previous versions. So if you upgrade it to a new version and you actually wanna go back to a previous version, it's as easy as selecting the number of the version you wanna go back to and then click on roll back. But we don't wanna do that now, so let me put it back to where it was. And next, you have the white label tab, which is an exclusive Astra Pro feature. 
And basically that allows you to completely rebrand Astra, the Astra theme, the Astra starter templates. And that's pretty handy if you are an agency, for example, and you don't want your clients to know which tools you are using and you want to present it as your own. But more about that later in this video. Okay, now we're back in the free version and next we have the starter templates. We actually got it in both the free and the pro version. And as you saw previously in this video, we use this to install ready-made demos in just a few clicks. And next in the free version, we have the free VS Pro tab. If you're wondering if Astra Pro is for you, it's very convenient because you have a full list of what's included in both versions. Okay, now how to customize your new website. So in WordPress, you want to hover over the Astra element in the navigation and then you may want to click straight away on customize or you can click on the dashboard. And if you want to access a specific setting, you can just click on that setting. But in our case, we're going to click on start customizing and this is going to load the WordPress customizer. Now, if you're using the pro version of Astra, make sure you go to the dashboard and enable all pro modules just for the sake of this tutorial and then you can activate and deactivate those you don't want for better performance. Okay, so we're back on the free version in the WordPress customizer. Now, before we get started with the customization options, let's take a look at the customizer interface. So here at the bottom, you see three icons, a desktop, a tablet and a mobile. So if I click on the tablet, as you can see, we have the tablet view and as you may have guessed, here we get the mobile view when I click on the mobile icon. And that makes it really handy to know what you're working on and if everything is going to look good on every type of device. Now, let me go back into desktop mode and let's say, for example, I want to change the logo here. So I can hover over the logo and as you can see, there's a little pencil icon. And as I click on this pencil icon, now I can see that the options have changed here in the left panel. I can edit right here in the left panel. Now let's say I want to change the logo width to 200. That's for the desktop. But now let me go back into tablet mode and I could make it 50. You see it's tiny, it doesn't look good, but just to show you the difference. And then if I click again, I go into mobile mode and let's make it super tiny. And once again, this is just to show you that you can have really a granular control. So you can have one size for the mobile, you can have one size for the desktop and one size for the tablet. And now in most cases, if you just want to reset the values, all you have to do is to click on that reset icon. There you go. Now let me go into mobile mode. And as you can see, it's been reset for the mobile mode. And if you go back to the desktop mode, it's also been reset. Now, the next thing you need to be aware of is that all the changes you make in the customizer will only take effect once you click on the publish button located in the top left corner. Okay, with that out of the way, let's take a look at the options to start customizing our website for both the free and the pro versions of Astra. Now, before we take a look at the specific Astra options, let's take a look at the WordPress options. And it starts here with site identity. So if I click on site identity, I can click on select site icon, which is the icon that usually appears in the browser tab. And I can also change the site title and logo settings if I click here. But we'll see that in a moment because there's another way we can access those settings. So let me go back. Next, we have menus. So if I click on menu, I can see my current active menu by clicking here. But once again, we'll access it via the Astra options later. And I can also view all locations that can have a menu attached to it. Once again, we'll see that later. And next we have the widgets tab. And it says here that the Astra theme has 10 widget areas, but this particular page does not display them. So we can navigate to other pages to add widgets. But once again, we'll see that later in this video. Next, we have our homepage settings. And this is very important if you want to change your homepage. So for the moment, the homepage is a page called home. Makes sense, right? But let's say I want to change it and change it to books. So now this is the new homepage. So if I click on publish and if I go back to the front end, let me refresh this page. And there you go. This is our new homepage. Now, of course, if you click on home here, it's still linking to the page called home, if that makes sense. But if you click on the logo, it's going to redirect to the homepage and this is our new homepage. So let's go back 
and let's set it back to home. Pretty easy, huh? And next we have the post page. So basically what this is, is telling WordPress which page we want to use for our blog. And if I click on blog, as you can see, we can see the blog here. And if we go in the WordPress admin in pages, click on edit blog. As you can see, this page is empty. But let me show you something. If I change this to books, for example, and I click back again on blog. So as you can see, we are on a page called blog, but it's empty. So basically we tell WordPress which page is going to be the blog page, regardless of the name of that page. So here in the dropdown, I've selected books. Let me click on publish and let me show you. So if we go back to the front end, this is our books page before I've made the changes and I'm just going to refresh the page. And as you can see now, the page called books is our blog. I don't want to confuse you, but just to explain to you how you can easily change the blog page. So let's go back and let's put it back to the blog page. Let's click on publish. And now if you go back and refresh and just remember we are on the books page. So as I refresh, there you go. The book page is back. And if I click on blog, it's back to normal. This is our blog. So now you know how to easily change the home page or to set a blog page if, for example, the starter template you install didn't have a blog by default. Okay, next we have additional CSS. And if you don't know what CSS is, you probably don't need it, but just know that it's a way to style your website with code or to do crazy things like this and the whole website disappear with just one line of code. Okay, let's not play with fire. Let's remove this. Okay, now let's start with the Astra specific options. Okay, so first we have the global options. And when we click on global options, we can see we have a subset of options. Typography, colors, container, buttons, scroll to top, block editor, and miscellaneous. So let's start with typography. And here in just one click, I can change the fonts by clicking on one of the presets. Or I can change the fonts on a granular level. So for example, if I want to change the body font, and by the way, the body font is the font that's going to be used for the body of the text. So excluding titles, for example. So here, if I select in the drop down, I have many fonts. Let me change it. And as you can see, it's completely changed. Now I can always go back and put back the previous font. Now I can also select variants and depending on which font you selected, it may look different and I can choose the font weight. So let me select ultra bold. And as you can see, our body text is now super bold. So let me put it back. And here I can change the font size, the line height, and the letter spacing. Now, most of the options are self-explanatory, so make sure you play with it. Let's put it back. Let's close this. You could do the same for the headings font, so all the titles, or you could decide that you want a different font for the H1, the H2, the H3, and so on. Next, let's take a look at the global color palette. Now, before I explain the global palette, let me explain how it would be if we didn't have this option. So as you can see here, we have several elements with the same color here on the page. And as we scroll through, we have more elements. Now, if we didn't have the global palette, we would have to set each color individually. And then let's say that, you know, after a few days, you think, oh no, I don't want this color. I want to change it to green, for example. Well, you would have to open each and every element and change it. And that would be a nightmare, especially if you have a lot of pages and a lot of elements. Whereas here, look, I can pick this color and then I'm just going to change it to green. Let me pick this green. And as you can see, all the elements have changed. We have our cart our title and our buttons in just one click. So as you can see, it's really powerful. So let's click on reset to put our main color back. And as you can see, it's back to normal in just one click. So once you've defined all the colors in your global palette, now you can affect those global colors to various elements like the accent color, which is going to be the color you want to use when you want to draw attention to something the links color. So you have the regular links color and then you have the hover color. You can also choose global colors for your headings, which are your titles, your body text, your borders. 
your site background and your content background. So for example, let's pick this color for our site background. I know it doesn't look good, but it's just for demonstration sake. So let me reset this and we could do the same thing for our content background. And if we take a look at the pro version of Astro, you can see that we have more granular control because now we can set a specific color for each heading or in other words, for each title size. So for example, let me scroll a little bit. Here at the top, we have an H1 title. And here at the bottom, we have an H2 title. So now let me show you. I'm gonna click on heading one and I'm going to change the color. And now you can see here on top, the sounds of the empire has changed. Let me close this. And now let's select heading two. And let me pick this color and take a look at the bottom right corner of this window. And there you go, the colors change. So it makes it really easy to have more granular control on the title's colors. Okay, next, let's take a look at the containers options. So we're back in the free version and back to global containers. And to showcase the containers, let me open our sample page, which comes by default with every WordPress install. So basically container layouts give you several options to display the content on your website. So here we have a boxed view, as you can see here, it's really in a box. But if I want to demonstrate all the layouts, I should add a sidebar. So let me quickly go back, go to sidebar, and I'm going to use a right sidebar. But don't worry about it, we'll talk about sidebars later. So let me go back, go back to global container where we were. And as you can see here in the thumbnail, it shows the sidebar is boxed, which is exactly what we can see here. We have different boxes. Next, we have content boxed. And as you can see here, we still have our sidebar, but no boxes anymore. Next, we have full width contained. And now the box has disappeared around the content. But once again, if I really want to demonstrate this, I'm going to have to remove the sidebar. So let me go back, back one more time sidebar and I'm going to choose the no sidebar layout. Okay, let's go back, global, container. And now you see our content without a sidebar, but it's not boxed anymore. Next, we have full width stretched. And as you can see, it's stretching all across the width of the window. And next we have our new layout, narrow width. And talking about width, you can change the container width. So for example, let me drag this down. And as you can see, the content is now narrower. Let me put it back how it was. And if I choose box layout, for example, here I can change the container width. And there you go. Let's reset it. So as you can see, it's really powerful because you have a great amount of control about how you want to present your layouts. And if we take a look at the pro version, as you can see, we have more options with site layouts. So the default is full width, but then we have max width and take a look at what happens in the preview. Now it takes the max width value. So if I change it, I have more control on all the elements. Let's reset it. Let's click on padded and padded is very convenient. If you want to have a margin all around your website's content, and that's a very trendy design. Next, we have the fluid site layout, which as the name hints, allows you to create fluid elastic layouts. Let's put it back on default. And next, as you can see here, we have a design tab and that gives us access to container spacing options. So if I add 50 pixels of outside spacing, you can see it reflected here in the preview. If I put 500, you see what I mean. Same thing for inside and now 500. Let's put it back how it was. Now these are for the global container options, but as we'll see, Astra allows us to have a more granular control because we can actually decide which container we want, for example, for pages or for posts. And we'll see that later in the video. Next, let's take a look at the buttons options. So in global, click on buttons. And for this, we're gonna go to our shop page, open one of our product pages. Now, as you can see here, we have a button with rounded corners. And now I'm just going to click on this preset. And there you go. In just one click, all the buttons on our website have changed. So let's take a look. Let's scroll down 
and here in the footer, as you can see, our button in our form has also changed. Let's scroll back up. And just like we saw previously, we can also use the global colors to change the text color, background color, border color. We can change our fonts, change our padding, our border width, and the amount of roundness we want to our rounded corner button. Okay, let's reset this. And now still in global, you want to click on scroll to top. And as the name suggests, we're going to add a scroll to top button. So just click on enable scroll to top. And now as I start scrolling, as you can see here in the bottom right corner, we added the scroll to top button. So here in the options, you can decide to display on desktop or on mobile, on the left or the right hand side. And you can also change the icon size. That's a bit too big. Next, you also have a design tab. And when you click on it, you can change the background color. So let's pick this color. We can also change the background hover color. So let's pick this. And now when I hover over the element, as you can see, it's got the right colors. And we can do the same thing for the icon color. You could pick this and this. Of course, here it doesn't look really good. So let's change it back to white. And now when I click on the button, it's doing its job. Back to the top. Next, let's go to Global, Block Editor. And basically, the Block Editor option takes care of core blocks spacing. Now, depending on which starter template you install, you may see different results. So if you want more info on the topic, I've put a link to our documentation in the description of this video. But for the time being, and for this specific demo, you can choose Comfort, Compact, or Custom. Okay, next, let's go to Global, Miscellaneous. And here you have an option that says enable smooth scroll to ID. Now, before I show you what it does, let me show you what happens when it's not enabled. So here I have a button that's linked to an anchor on the page. So basically it's going to go to a different place on the page. So as I click on it, as you can see, it went straight to the last sentence, which is the anchor that I've added. I will show you in a moment how to do this. So let me show you one more time. As I click on it, it's going straight there, but it's snappy, it's not smooth. Now, if I enable smooth scroll to ID, and now if I click on it, as you can see, it's scrolling down, but the smooth way. And if you're wondering how to create an anchor on the same page, we'll see later on in this video how to edit the content, but for the time being, let me just show you. So I click on the plus sign here, and I'm just gonna start typing buttons. I'm going to take this one in the blue color because it's from our Spectra plugin. So I can just click on it and it added a button here at the bottom. So next I can click on this icon to see the list view. And then I can just drag and reorder and I'm just going to put the buttons just below the previous ones. So here are my two buttons. I only need one. So I'm going to click on this one, click on the three dots and remove the button. Next, I'm going to double click to change the text. Let me call it anchor. Next, still with our button selected, make sure you click on the content sub tab here on the right hand side. And then where it says link, you're going to put a unique identifier. Just one word, for example, down. And take notice, it's got the pound sign and then the word. So I'm just going to copy the word without the pound sign. Very important. So right click and copy. And next I'm going to select where I want to go on the page. So I'm going to select this block right here. And now with my block selected here on the right hand side, I'm going to click on the advanced sub tab and where it says HTML anchor, I'm just going to right click and paste the word I just copied. And by the way, before I save, I'm just going to click on the previous button and remove it just to show you that it works fine. Next, let me click on update. And now if I go back to the front end and refresh, here is my anchor button. And as I click, it's going down smoothly. Now let's take a look at the header builder. So in the customizer, you want to click on header builder. And before we dive in the options, I have to introduce a few concepts. So here we are on the home page, and you may not see it because it's just a color behind it, but this is a transparent header. There are several types of headers. You have the standard header, 
you have transparent header and in the pro version as we'll see you also have the sticky header but this is a transparent header now let me click on the blog page and here you can see we have a regular header now let me show you so here i have an option transparent header and we'll talk more about the transparent header later but just to show you i have an option that says enable on complete website so if i toggle this on as you can see it toggled on the transparent header it looks a bit weird here so <laughs> let me put it back let me toggle it off but that was just to introduce the concept that you can have several types of headers on a website made with Astra. Now you may be wondering, how do we decide which page has the transparent header or the standard header? And we just saw we can enable globally, but what if you want to enable page per page? So in WordPress, go to pages, then click on edit home. And here I'm on the home page. So if you take a look in the top right corner, you have the Astra settings icon. And if I click on it, that allows me to introduce this concept of granular control. So first of all, you can change the layout here. We saw earlier on that you can change the layout globally and we'll see later on you can change it per page, per post, the type of content. But you can do it here. In each and every page, you can decide which layout you want, which container you want. Next, you can decide if you want a sidebar for this specific page. But let me close this. You can also disable the header and the footer for this specific page. But what we're interested in is the advanced settings. So if I click on advanced settings, first of all, I have an option to disable the primary header and the mobile header. But what we're interested in is the transparent header. And as you can see here, it's enabled just for the home page. Now, if you go back to the WordPress admin to pages, then sample page, click on edit. And once again, let's click on the Astra settings. Let's go to advanced settings. And as you can see here, the transparent header is disabled. It could also be set to inherit because by default, the transparent header is not enabled globally. And if you go back to the front end, here we have our home page. And if we click on the sample page, as we can see, we have a regular non-transparent header. Okay, with this concept out of the way, let's go back to the WordPress customizer. So once again, in the customizer, we want to click on the header builder. And look at the message here. The system is going to tell us that this header on this page is set for the transparent header. So it gives you a hint on where to actually change the settings. But first of all, we want to start with the regular header. So in my navigation, I'm going to select my sample page. And as you can see, the message has disappeared. So as you can see here, we have several elements and we can either click on each and every element and then change the settings. Or here at the bottom of the window, we have the header builder. So for example, if I click on primary menu, as you can see in the left panel, now I have the options where I can change things. Click on search, cart, you get the idea. So let me go back. And it's really up to you how you want to access the various elements. But for me, I find it easier to just click on what I want to change here in the header builder. But before we even change the elements, as you can see here, we have three rows. The first is the above header. The second is the header. And the third is the below header. And in each one, I can add some elements. So if I click on the plus sign, let's say add the account. And there you go. Now you got the account icon here on top. Now here at the bottom, let me add social. And now we have the social icons in the below header. And as you may imagine, you can just drag and drop and reorder the elements. Easy, huh? Now, this is such a powerful feature because otherwise you would need a developer to change the elements around. But now you can take care of it on your own. So let's remove this. And the next thing I want to show you is that at the beginning of every row, there is a gear icon. And if we click on this gear icon, we have specific settings. For example, we can change the height of the header. Or if we go to the design tab, we can change the background. We can add a bottom border and we can change the spacing or the margin. Now, as I demonstrated, when you click on the plus sign, you have several elements that you can add here. Now in the pro version, as we click on the plus sign, as you can see, we have more elements. 
because we have buttons, button one, button two. So let me add some. The language switcher. So if you use a plugin like WPML to have a bilingual or multilingual website, then you can use this handy language switcher widget. You can also add a toggle button. And if I click on the toggle button, I have the options here. So I can change the way it looks. And in case you can't see because it's too small, it's right here. Actually, let's put it here on the right hand side. Let's save. And now if I click on the toggle icon, you see we have this full width navigation. Now, of course, we could have made it look much better, but it was just to show you an idea of some of the additional elements you get with the pro version. And by the way, if you want to edit the off canvas menu that we just saw, just click on the gear icon and then you can select whether you want it to be a flyout type, a full screen type or a drop down type. So let's take a look. We had the drop down. Let's select flyout. Let's click on publish. Now let's refresh our page. And now, as you can see, we have the flyout. Let's go back and now let's select full screen. Click on publish. Let's go back and refresh the page. And now, as you can see, it's full screen. Let's go back. Here you can decide whether the drop down target is an icon or a link. And you can select the content alignment. So I click center, publish, let's refresh. And now our content is centered. Then we have our design tab and let's change the colors. So let's pick this color for the background and let's change the close icon color. Let's publish, refresh, and there you go. Of course, you can make it look even better, but you get the idea. Now let's take a look at our language switcher. And here we can add several more languages. So if you want to add Albanian, there you go. You can also select whether you want it to be horizontal or vertical and decide whether you want to show the country flag or maybe you just want the country flag and not the name. And of course, on the design tab, you can really make it look the way you want. Okay, let's remove this and let's save. Okay, now back in the free version, let's click on site title and logo. And here we have our current logo. We can remove it, click on select logo, or we could have just clicked on change. Next, click on upload files, select files, and I'm going to select some images. So here I'm going to select a logo for the regular header. And my regular header has a white background, so I don't want white on white. So I'm going to pick this one, click select. And here it's going to ask me to crop by default, but if you want the full image, click on skip cropping. And voila, here is our new logo. Next, you can decide to add a logo for Retina devices, but I'm not going to use this option. And you can change the logo size. So you can either use the slider or input a specific value, but it's a bit too big. So let's scale it down. Next, you can add a site title and toggle the visibility on desktop, tablet and mobile. But I just want my logo here, so I'm not going to activate it. But if I did, I could say whether or not I want the logo and the site title to be in line. So on the same line. And next, I have my tagline. And once again, I can toggle the visibility just like I can toggle the visibility for the logo. So if I toggle this off right now, the logo is not visible on desktop. But if I move to tablet, as you can see, the logo is still visible and the same will happen if I click on the mobile. OK, let's go back into desktop and let's activate the visibility. OK, next, I have an option here to change the site icon. So click on select site icon. And once again, you can pick one from your media library or you can click on upload files. Click select files and I'm going to add my site icon. Click on select and there you go. Now our site icon is set, which is what is going to appear in the browser tab. Click on publish to save your changes and let's go back. And once again, if I click on site title and logo, click on the design tab. And here we can change the title color, the tagline color, but we don't have any here and we can change the margin. So if I input some values, as you can see, I can change the margin. And if we go to the pro version, we can see that in the design tab, we have two more options, title font and tagline font. OK, let's go back to our free version. And before we take care of our primary menu, let's look at the search widget. So click on search 
And as you can see here, we can change the icon size. And if you go to the design tab, we can change the icon color and the spacing. Now let's go to our pro version. And as you can see here, we can change the search style. So we get four search styles. First of all, we get a slide search, which is the default. Then we get the full screen search. And if I click on publish and go back to the front end, let me refresh. And now when I click on the icon, as you can see, it's full screen. Let's go back. Let's use the header cover search option, publish. Back to the front end, let's refresh. And as you can see, it's just a top banner. Let's go back. And the last option is the search box, publish. Let's refresh. And here we have our search box. Okay, let me put it back to the default. And if we take a look at the design tab, you can see that we got many more options. Okay, let's go back to the free version and let's click on the cart element. And here you can change the icon, the cart label. You can choose to display the cart count or hide the cart total label. But the great thing is that you can select which cart click action you want. So for the moment, it's drop down. So let me publish this. Now let's go to the front end. Let's go to the shop. Let's open this product and let's add to cart. Let's add another one. And now when I hover over the icon, you can see we got this drop down style cart. Now let's go back and let's change the option to slide in, publish. Let's click on another page to refresh. And now I need to click on it and I got this slide in cart style. Now if we click on cart page and publish, let's click on a new page to refresh. And if I click on it, it's going to take me straight to the cart page. Let's go back and let's put it down on drop down and let's publish our work. Okay, next let's open our sample page with our regular header. Next, let's click on primary menu. So first of all, if you install the same demo, you will notice that in the original demo, there is no drop down menu. Now the pages were created when you imported the demo, but it was not in the menu. I'm going to show you how to add new elements in the menu. But the first set of options you see here are for the sub menu. So I can change the width and now you can see how wide it is and I can add item dividers. So now I have a line between each element. So let me put it back how it was. And next, click on configure menu from here. And it's going to take you to this panel where you can view all locations for your menu. In our case, you want to use our primary menu, which is located in the header. So just click on edit menu. And as you can see, this is our menu here. Now, if you want to add an item, click on the plus sign. And here you will see all the pages currently on your website. If you're looking for a specific page, if you have too many pages, you can just type the name of the page. So if I type contact, there you go. And if I want to add it, I just click on the plus sign. Now, granted, it's already there, but it's just for demonstration purposes. And I can reorder, drag and drop it where I want. But in case I have a hard time to place it exactly where I want, what I can do is click on reorder and then use the little arrows. So for example, here, I can put it at the same level than the home page. And then I can go down or up. And when I'm done, I just click on done. Now, if I want to remove a page, I click on the little arrow and click on remove. So as you can see, it's pretty simple to edit the menu. Now let's go back, back one more. And once again, let's click on header builder. And if you go back to primary menu, click on the design tab. And here you have a set of options to change all the colors here in the header and it's pretty self-explanatory. So for example, in one click, I can change the background color, but this is just for the primary menu, not for the header. Now, if you go to the pro version, the difference is that you get way more granular control for all the colors of your primary menu. And you also get options for mega menu, which is a feature exclusive to the pro version. Next in the customizer, we want to go to header builder, transparent header. And as we saw previously on this video, we can decide to enable the transparent header on the complete website, but we don't want to do that because I showed you how to do it per page because we want a mix of transparent and regular header on this website. 
Now, if we did decide to enable the transparent header on the complete website, as you can see here, we could still enable or disable it on certain type of content, like on 4.4 pages, search pages, archive pages, just on the main blog page, on the latest post page, so you still have some control. But as mentioned, on this demo, we're not going to use this because we can actually manage it per page, as we saw earlier on in this video. Next, we can decide to enable on desktop, mobile, or desktop and mobile, and we can choose a different logo for the transparent header if we wish. Now here, we don't really need it because we have a solid color, but let me show you what happens if we change this. So let's edit the home page. So first, I'm going to select my main container. Then in style, I'm going to change the image. Go to the media library and let me use a dark image. Let me use this one. Click on select and click on update. And now back in the customizer, as you can see, we can't see the logo. Actually, we can't really see the menu or the text, but we're just going to focus on the logo here. So enable the different logo for transparent header. Click on select image. And I've already uploaded a light logo in the media library. And voila, now it's readable. Now you could also decide to have a different logo for Retina devices, but I'm not going to do it here and as usual you can change the logo width but for now we're going to remove this image and put the previous image back so let me toggle this off let's publish and back to editing our home page i'm going to switch back to the previous image and click on update to save our work and there you go things are back to normal okay let's go back to our free version let's go back again then let's click on header builder and this time we're going to click on transparent header. But if you want to see the changes reflected, we need to click on a page with a transparent header. So let's click on the home page. And now if we click on the design tab, we have our colors and background options. For example, our background overlay. We can customize the colors for the site title. Now we don't have a site title here. We can change the menu colors. So for example, the text links, as you can see, we can change it easily. Also for the hover color, so when you hover over it, we can change the colors of the submenu. So for the moment, the submenu is all white for the background, but we can change this and we can change the text and link colors. And if you added social icons, search or some other widgets, you have a lot of control for the colors. And if we take a look at the pro version, you have a few more options, for example, for the search color, on top of the icon color, you can change the box background and the text and placeholder colors. Now let's take a look at some exclusive pro features for the header builder. So once again in the customizer, click on header builder and next click on sticky header. So currently before we enable the options, as we scroll down, the header disappears on top. Now let's go back and let's stick the primary header. And now as we scroll down, as you can see, the header is sticky. The only issue is because it's transparent, it's not really readable because you get the content coming behind. But the solution is easy. So hover over the area of the header and click on the little pencil icon, which is the other way to access the settings. And now in the left panel, you have a general and a design tab. So click on the design tab. And here you will see a sticky header option. And you can change the background color of the sticky header. So for example, I could add this color, which is completely white. And now as I scroll down, as you can see, we have this solid color, so it's way more readable. And of course, we have the usual spacing options like adding some padding or some margin. So let's go back and then once again in sticky header. Now, if you had an above header row or a below header row, we could also stick it. But for the moment, we only have one row, which is the primary header. Neat, huh? Now, right now, when we scroll, we see the sticky header right away. But we have an option here, hide when scrolling down. So let's take a look. As we scroll down, we don't see the sticky header. But as soon as we scroll back up, here it appears. Great. But now what about a different logo for sticky header? So let's enable the option. Let's click on select image. I have already uploaded my logo. Let's scroll back up and I'm going to remove the hide when scrolling down option. So as soon as I start scrolling, you can see we have our new logo, but 
Now I can also add a different logo for Retina devices, but I'm not going to do this and I can change the size. So let me make it a bit smaller. And next I can select the animation. So right now it says none, but I can change it to slide. And as you saw, we saw the sliding movement. So let me show you one more time. Slide. Let's try fade. Scroll back up. And as we scroll, you see the fade effect. Next, you can decide to enable on desktop, mobile, or desktop and mobile. Let's publish our work. Let's go to the front end. Let's refresh. And now as we scroll down, we have this sticky header so that our menu is always available. And if we want to style the background color of the sticky header, all we have to do is hover over the header, then click on this pencil icon, click on the design tab, and then where it says background color, once again, we can change the color here. And as we scroll, as you can see, the color changed. Now let's put it back to white and let's publish our work. Now, before we move on to the next option, which is the breadcrumb, let's take a look at the footer builder because it's pretty similar to the header builder. So click on footer builder. And if you followed along for the header builder, you should now be familiar with this interface. So once again, you can click on each element here on the left hand side, or you can click on the elements directly within the footer builder. Now here, for example, if I click on HTML1, basically I have a text editor module and I can just add some text right here. Next, I have the widget. And this widget is a form widget from the plugin WP form that was installed automatically when we imported the starter template demo. Here we have another HTML widget that has the logo and we can change it and add our own logo and we can resize it. Next, we have our footer menu and it's the exact same thing as we saw earlier. Click on configure the menu, locate footer menu, click on edit menu. And just like previously, you can add pages, remove pages and reorder. Let's go back, back one more. Let's click on footer builder again. And as usual, when we click on the gear icon on the row, we have some options and actually more options than what we saw in the header builder. So we can choose the number of columns here. I got three, but let's try four. And if I click on the plus sign, I can add three more widgets. Let's go back to three. Now in terms of layouts, you have several options. Next, you have more options for inner elements layout by default it's stacked, but you can use inline. Next, you can choose to use the content width or full width and the vertical alignment, middle, top or bottom. And once again, you can toggle the visibility. You also have a design tab where you can add a top border, change the background, change the inner column spacing, use custom padding or add a margin. Now, if we take a look at the pro version, if we click, we can add more elements. Instead of just three more widgets, we could add two buttons and a language switcher. Next, in the customizer, let's go to breadcrumb. And basically the breadcrumbs are a way for the website visitor to know where they are on the website. So in the dropdown, let's select inside. And as you can see, our breadcrumb is here. Let's select after. And as you can see, it's a little bit lower. And let's select before title. And there you go. Now you can change the alignment. And you can also decide where you want to enable it. You could say you just want to enable it on the home page and just remove it from anywhere else. It's really up to you. So let's turn this off and let's save our work. Okay, next in the customizer, let's take a look at the blog options. And let's start with the blog archives. So first of all, here at the top, you get the blog title. So click on the little arrow here and here we can change the layout. So for that, let me go to the blog page. So this is considered our blog archive because it will reference all the blog posts that we have. So now you can click on the second layout and it looks like nothing happened. But here you have an option that says enable on blog post and page. So let me turn this on and there you go. Now you can see the difference. So let me switch back to 
banner layout one and banner layout two. So here you can change if you want the full width size or a custom size. And once again, you can play around with the width. Next, you can decide if you want to show the title or turn it off. Let me switch it back on. If you have a description, you can also decide to turn it on or off. And here you can also turn on breadcrumbs. Now we've seen breadcrumbs before, so you should have a pretty clear idea of what they do. Next, you can choose the horizontal alignment. So left, middle or right. Skip it in the middle. And you can also choose the vertical alignment. But if I do change it now, nothing will happen because the height of this banner is not big enough. So for that, we go to the design tab. And here I can change the banner minimum height. So now we decide, let me go back to the general tab, vertical alignment, top, middle, bottom. Let's put it back in the middle and let's go back to the design tab. So here I can also change the inner elements spacing, as you can see. I can decide whether I want a container background. So let me pick this color. I can change the title color, the text color, the link color and the link hover color. So now when I hover over the breadcrumb, as you can see, it's working fine. Next, I can also change the title font. So as usual, I can change the size and all the other options that you should now be used to. Next, I can change the margin and the padding. Let's reset all the styles. Let's go back to our blog archive options. And now let's take a look at our container and sidebar layouts. So let's say I want a sidebar. Let me pick the right sidebar layout. And then here in the container layout, I can choose, for example, the box layout. Let's scroll down. Once again, I can keep the content width or I can use custom content width. And now I can really play with the width, just with the slider. Next, I can decide to disable the featured image and the title and blog meta. And if I decide to enable the title and blog meta, I then have a granular control over these. So for example, let me put the category just before the comments. And here you see it reflected. I can decide to hide the category. Actually, I can decide to add any element of the meta elements. I can enable the publish dates. And if there are any tags, I can decide to show them. Next, I can decide to show the full content or just an excerpt. So if I put full content, there you go. The full content is displayed. Okay, let's scroll back up and let's go to the design tab. And here on the design tab, we can change the post title font size. Okay, now let's take a look at the pro version. So once again, in the customizer, let's go to blog, blog archive. And when it comes to the blog title, the options are going to be the same. But now let's scroll down. And as you can see here, we have a blog layout section in the pro version. So now I can change the layout to this one. Or let's say I want to have the image on the left hand side. There you go. Next, I can decide to add space between posts, as you can see. And I can decide to enable a date box. Now that looks very slick and professional and you have several options. You can keep it square or maybe you want a circle version because maybe it better matches your branding. And I'm going to put it back to square. Next, as usual, you can change the content width, going to custom and playing around with the slider. And as we saw previously, you can decide what you want to show in terms of feature image and title and blog meta. Now, one difference with the free version is that in the pro version, you have an item called read time. So let me enable this. And as you can see now, we have the reading time. So here it says three minutes of reading, one minute of reading. Maybe you've already seen that on professional blogs. It looks really neat and really helps the viewer know how much time they're gonna spend on each blog post. Also in the pro version, you can change the excerpt count. So let me show you if I put 15, there you go. The excerpt is way shorter. So you have more control over this. Let me put it back. And next you can also change the read more text label. So let's change it to read it. And there you go. 
Next, you can decide to show the read more text as a button. So if I turn this on, now we have a fully fledged button. And next, we can show the featured image's size. So for example, let me put 300 by 150 pixels, apply size. And as you can see, you can really play with the size you want. Now, that doesn't look really good, so let me remove this. And when you remove the number, it goes back to auto. Just click on apply size, and there you go. Next, we have our post pagination and the post pagination style. But in order to demonstrate this, we need to go back to the WordPress admin. And next, you want to go to settings, reading. And here I can decide how many posts I want to display on the blog archive page. So where it says blog pages show at most, instead of 10 posts, I'm just going to put one post just for demonstration purposes. OK, settings saved. Now let me go back to the customizer. I'm going to save my work and I'm going to refresh the page. OK, now let's go back to blog, blog archive. Let's scroll down and here let me click on the blog archive page. OK, so now as you can see, we only have one blog post showing on the blog archive page and here is our pagination. So if I click on two, it's going to take me to the next blog post and so on. You get the idea. So let me go back to page one. So this is the number post pagination option, but I can also choose infinite scroll. So let me save our work. Now let's go to the front end. Let's go to the blog page. And now as I start scrolling, as you can see, it's loading more blog posts. Every time I scroll, it's going to load a new blog post until there is no more post to show. So that was one way of doing it, but there's another way. As you can see here, there's a new option called event to trigger infinite loading. Now it's set to scroll, but if I choose click, now as you can see, I have a button. And if I scroll down, I can change the label on this button. So let me change this to load more posts. Let's save. Now let's go back to the front end and let me refresh this page. So as you can see now, I still have one blog post, but now I have a button. So if I scroll down, nothing's going to happen. I need to click on load more posts. And you get the idea. So let's go back. And now if I scroll back up, let's go to the design tab and compare to the free version. Now we can change the content color. So we can change the post title color, the meta color and the meta link color. And of course, you can also change the hover state. You can change the meta font, the pagination font and the post spacing outside and inside. Okay, next in the customizer, let's go to blog single post options. So first of all, let's click on our blog page and let's open one post. Okay, next you want to take a look at our post title. So first of all, if I disable, you can see the whole image and the title disappeared. So let me enable it back. And now let's click on the little arrow. And once again, we have two layouts. So let me show you layout two, but in this case, I prefer layout one. So once again, you can reorder the elements with just drag and drop features. So it's very easy. You don't need a developer. You can just do it yourself. Next, we have a granular control to disable any element that you want to disable. And as usual, you can add breadcrumbs. Next, once again, if you enable the meta, we can change the elements and have more granular control over these. And last but not least, we can change the horizontal alignment. Now, if you go to the design tab, we can change the inner element spacing. So let me scroll back up. And we can change the title color, the text color, the link color, and the link hover color. And right below, we can change the title font, text font, and meta font. So for each of these, all you have to do is click on the little pencil and you can start playing with the various options that are self-explanatory. Okay, let's go back and let me scroll back up on the page here. And just like for the blog archive page, you can change the layout. So let's say I want a right sidebar. Let me click on right sidebar layout. And then I can choose which type of container layout I want. Do I want it boxed like it is by default or maybe I want it content boxed. If you follow the video along, you should be pretty familiar with this concept now. So let me put it back to boxed. Now let's scroll down. Once again, you can go to custom and change the content width. 
Now, one neat feature is the enable related posts. So let me scroll down. And now if I enable this option, as you can see, I have a neat little section with related posts and I have a few more options. So let's add read related posts so we can change the label. We can change the text alignment. We can also change the number of posts. So let's say I want three, but now we set in two columns. So let's set it to grid column layout three. Nice. Next, we can also decide which post we want to use with the post query option. So we can choose related posts by categories or by tags. We can decide to order by date, title, post order, random or common counts. And we can choose the order. Is it ascending or descending? So many options to display the related posts. Next, we can decide whether we want to show the feature of the image and the title and post meta. And as usual, you can change things around. So you can put the category first, but let's say that for a related post section, it could be nice to just remove some of the meta. Way cleaner. Now there is one more option here, which is the enable post excerpt. So let's turn this on. And as you can see, we have our post excerpt. Let's say a count of five words. There you go. Let's scroll back up. And now if we click on the design tab, we have options here for the related posts. We can change the color of the section title and we can also change the section background. Next, we can change the content colors. So we have our text color, our section title font, our post title font, and our meta font. But I've removed the meta here, so you won't see it. Let's reset everything. And next you can change the post spacing. So if I want outside spacing, you get the idea. Okay, now let's take a look at the pro version. So in the customizer, you wanna to go to blog, single post, and next in the preview, I'm gonna click on blog and let me open a blog post. So let's take a look at the post title option. Click on the little arrow. And the difference here with the free version is that in the meta options, we have the read time. So let me enable this. And now as you can see, we have the minutes of reading. So here it says three minutes of reading, which is really handy for the website visitors. Okay, let's go back. And now in our single post options, let's scroll down. And here we have a new section. So we can enable author info. So let me go to the bottom of the post. And if I enable author info, as you can see here, I have a author info box. Now, just as a side note, if you want to change the thumbnail here for the author, you need to do this with a service called Gravatar. Now it's free. All you need to do is link the email address of your WordPress account to your Gravatar. And once you've done that, the default thumbnail image will be replaced with the image you uploaded to your Gravatar. Now, the good thing is when you set up your Gravatar, every time you use that email address, that image will appear. Next, disable single post navigation. So here you see we have previous post. And if I click on this, it's taking me to the previous post, as you may have guessed. And now we also have a next post link. So if we turn this option on, our single post navigation has disappeared as promised. So let me reset this. The next option is auto load previous posts. And if you hover over the little question mark, it says auto load previous posts can now be previewed in the customizer. So let's save this. Okay, let's go back to the front end. Let me open this post. And now take a look as I scroll down. As you can see, it loaded the previous post. Let me scroll again and again and again. You get the idea. Now the next option is remove featured image padding, but this option would not work on fluid layouts. Okay, let's enable our related posts. And next let's scroll back up and let's go to the design tab. And here in the pro version, on top of the outside post spacing, we also now have the inside post spacing. Okay, next let's take a look at our page option. So in the customizer, click on page. And in the preview, we wanna to go to our sample page which once again is the default page that comes when you install WordPress. So first we have our page title option. Once again, we can disable the page title, but if it's enabled, we can click on the little arrow and here we can change the layout of the page. And now we have a banner here. Here we can change the banner container width and we can change the structure. Now here we don't have a featured image for this page, so we can't see it, but we can decide to hide the title and show the breadcrumbs, for example. 
we can change the horizontal alignment and we can change the vertical alignment but the banner height here is not big enough so let's go to the design tab and here we can change the banner minimum height and now if I click on the general tab and scroll down to vertical alignment as you can see now I can change to top middle and bottom let me put it back to middle and let's go back to the design tab where I'm going to reset this value next we can change the inner element spacing change the background change the title color the text color the link color and the link hover color let's reset all of these next I can change the title font with all the options here and I can change the text font next I can change the margin and the padding so let's go back so let me switch back to banner layout number one and let's go back one step now here we can change the container layout so we've already seen container layout options in the global options in the customizer but this is just for the page level so for example let's say I wanted a box sidebar now of course I need to select the sidebar in the sidebar layout or I could have it on the left hand side then you could decide if you want it boxed or content boxed full width contained full width stretched or narrow width and with the narrow width option the sidebar disappears so let's put it back on default and when you set it to default it's going to take the value from the global container options same for the sidebar layout okay let's save our work okay now let's take a look at our sidebar options so in the customizer click on sidebar and in the preview I'm going to go to my sample page once again this is the page installed by default when you install WordPress and earlier in this video I've shown you how to add it in the menu so here we have the default layout that says no sidebar and these options are on a global level so of course if you already enabled the sidebar for the page or the blog post it would already show here but in case you're just using the default options on the page and blog level then what you decide here is going to be reflected there so for example here let me click on left sidebar and there you go next we have right sidebar and next we can change the sidebar width so I can play around with a percentage and now let's take a look at the pro version and in the pro version you now have a design tab so if you click on design and as you can see we have a lot of options we can change the background color and that will be the background color of the whole sidebar we can change the content title color content text content link title font, content font but here we're using widgets here in the sidebar so we can change the title font size of the widget we can also change the widget font size next we can change the outside sidebar spacing as well as the inside sidebar spacing next let's take a look at the WooCommerce options so in the customizer you want to click on WooCommerce and before we take a look at the options let's open our shop page and if you followed along I showed you earlier on how to add a page in the menu navigation so first let's click on general and here we'll be able to control our container layout and sidebar layout options now if you choose the default it's going to take the global container options into account so once again I can change the container layout to boxed content boxed full width contained full width stretched and for the sidebar I can decide no sidebar left sidebar or right sidebar and if you want to know more I invite you to watch this segment of this video dedicated to the global container options okay next still in WooCommerce let's take a look at our product catalog options so first of all I can enable the products title and as you can see here I have a different layout so if I click on the little arrow I have two banner layouts so let me show you layout 2 once again we can decide to change the width of the banner let's put it back how it was and we can decide whether or not we want to show the title the description if we had one and the breadcrumb next we can change the horizontal alignment to left center right let's put it in the center and we can change the vertical alignment but here the banner height is not tall enough 
So let me scroll back up. Let's go to design. And now let me change the minimum banner height. Now let's go back to general. And now I can change the vertical alignment to top, middle, and bottom. Let's put it back in the middle. And let's go back to the design tab. Now let me reset this value. And here I can also change the inner element spacing. Next, I can choose no container background, a custom container background. So for example, I can change the color and I can change all the colors on a granular level, like the title color, text color, link color, and link hover color. Let's reset these values. I can also change the title font and the text font. Next, I can also choose the featured option. And here I have an option for overlay color and the rest of the options are the same. Next, I can add a margin. So for example, let me link all the values and let's add 50 pixels. Let's put it back. Or I can do the same thing for the padding. So let me link the values and let's add 50 pixels of padding. Now, in case you're wondering, the padding is going to be the spacing inside of a container, whereas the margin is going to be the spacing outside of a container. Now, let's reset those values. Let's scroll back up, click on the General tab, and I'm going to go back to Banner Layout number one and just disable Description and Breadcrumb. Now, let's go back one step. And here, once again, we can change our container and sidebar layouts and we can change the shop card design. Now, depending on the starter template you're using, you may see some differences or not. In this case, there is no difference. But once again, if you choose a different starter template, you may have different results. Next, we can change the number of shop columns. Let's go back to four. And you can also change the number of products per page. Now here it says 12, but we only have eight products, so it's only showing the maximum of product, but let's put four. And there you go. Now we have some pagination options. Next, you can change the shop archive content width. So we can go to custom and you can play with the slider to change the value. Let's put it back. Next, you got shop display options. So you can decide what you want to show on the shop page. Do you want to show products or maybe categories? So here we have two categories or you can decide to show categories and products. So as you can see, we got a mix of categories and products. Next, we have the category display option. So for this, let's click on one category. And now it's showing an archive page just for this category, which is the fantasy category. So now I can decide what do I want to show? Do I just want to show products like you see here or show subcategories or show subcategories and products? So it's the same as the previous option, but the thing is we don't have any subcategories on this specific example. But if we did, we could show it here. Next, we can change the default product sorting. So the default sorting is custom ordering plus name, but it could be popularity. How many sales? The average rating. Now here we don't really have a rating, but you could order it by rating. You can sort by most recent, by price, ascending, or by price descending, which means the most expensive first down to the least expensive product. Next, we have our shop car structure. So once again, we have various elements. We can change the order of the elements. So let me put the ratings first. And there you go. As you can see, we have our ratings just before the title. Let me put it back. Now we can decide to enable or disable elements. We can add a short description, add to cart and category. Let's save. Now let's scroll back up. Let's go to the design tab. And here in the design tab, we can change the shop card styling. So we can align it in the middle, on the right hand side, or on the left hand side. Now let's take a look at the pro version. So still in WooCommerce product catalog, if I scroll down, we can see here that in the shop card design, I have more options. So I still have design one and design two. And here, let me show you design three. So now we have the thumbnail on the left hand side and then the meta elements on the right hand side. So let me change the number of columns to two. Let's scroll down. And as we scroll down, we now have a toolbar structure option. 
So here we can decide if you want to leave the result count on or if you want to turn it off. And now it disappeared. Let's put it back on. We also have our sorting option on the right hand side. We can turn it off or back on. Here we have our easy list view. And as we click on the little arrow, we have some options. How many columns do we want? And do we want to align the content in the top or the center? So let me show you if I click here on our easy list view icon, here's my easy list. Now I can change whether I want to align it on the top. Next, I can add a filter. So if I click on the filter, as you can see, I can add shop filters here. And if you want to add shop filters, click on the pencil icon. And here at the very bottom, you will see shop filters. So this is using spectra. So here you can click on the plus sign to add a block. Let me type filter and let's add our spectra widget filter by price. Let's save our work. And now if I click on filter, let's say I only want products that are from $20 to $22. And as you can see, the changes are reflected here. So this is how you use the filter option. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back one more step. Then back to WooCommerce, product catalog. And first of all, let's switch off the product's title because we need it for the options we're gonna take a look at now. So let's scroll down to where we were. Okay, now if I disable the display page title, there you go. Same thing for display breadcrumb. And next we're gonna take a look at enable sticky sidebar, change filter list to buttons, and enable filter accordion. But for the time being, let's take a look at display active filters. So if I click here on filter, and I'm gonna set the filter to 20 to $21. And there you go. I have three products here. And now you see my active filter here and I can remove it by just clicking on it. Okay, so for these three options to work, we need to make a few changes. So first let's enable these. So enable sticky sidebar, change filter list to buttons and enable filter accordion. Now let's scroll back up. And for the sidebar layout, let's pick left sidebar. And as you can see here now on the left hand side, we have the space for the sidebar. So now let's go back, back one more step and click on widgets. Next, as you can see, now we have an option called WooCommerce sidebar. Let's click on the plus sign and I'm going to type filter and I'm going to add filter by price, which is a Spectra widget. And we'll talk about Spectra later in this video. Next, let's add another filter. This time is going to be filter by stock. Next, click on the plus sign here to add a block. And this time we're going to look for a widget called products list. Great. Now let's go back one more step and let's click on WooCommerce product catalog. Let's scroll down to where we were. So let's start by the end. We have the enable filter accordion. So if I enable it, this allows me to collapse the products list widget that we added. Okay, next the change filter list to buttons. So if I toggle this off, you can now see here a little box that can be ticked, but if you prefer, you can switch it back to change filter list to buttons. Next, we have the enable sticky sidebar. And for that, we want to make sure that we collapse our accordion. And now if I scroll down, as you can see, our sidebar stays in place. Next, we have our quick view. So quick view option could be on the image. So now when I hover over the image, as you can see, we can see the quick view button. And if I click on it, there you go. Next, I can choose on image click. So now when I hover over the image, nothing happens, but if I click on it, it opens our quick view right away. The next option is after summary. So now I have a dedicated button that says quick view. And if I click on it, you guessed it, it opens our quick view pop-up. Let's put it back on image. And depending on the layout you're using, it may be different. So let me scroll back up. Let's go to design one in the shop layout. And now when I hover over it, you can see the quick view button is right here. And if I click, ta-da. Okay, let's go back to where we were. And for the time being, I'm going to select on image click. Let's publish. Next, we have our stick add to cart button. So if I enable this option, and let's say I want a quick view of this book, as you can see, because the show description is so long, this option allows to keep the add to cart button 
always visible at the bottom. So this is way better for your conversion. Next, we have our shop pagination options. So as I scroll down, we have our shop pagination here. It can either be a number and it can be square or circle. Let me put back to square. Or I could decide to use infinite scroll. Now, this is very similar to the options we saw earlier on in this video for the blog archives. So let me scroll back up here. Once again, let me scroll back up and let me change the number of products per page. So I'm just going to put two. Let me publish. And now let's go back to the front end. Let me refresh. So I only have two products here. And as I start scrolling down, as you can see, it's going to load more products until there are no more products to show. Now let's go back. Let's scroll down in our options. And with infinite scroll, we can also decide to use the click option. So now it's got a button with the load more label and you can change the label. So let me change this to load more books. Let's publish. Now let's go back. Let me refresh the page. So now I still have my two products, but now as I scroll, nothing happens. I need to click on the button, load more books and it's loading our books. Okay, let's go back. Okay, when it comes to the shop filter that you can see right here, it can either be a link or it could be a button. And if you're using CSS, you can even take it a step further and add your own custom class. All you have to do is add a class here in the field. So right now, let's put it back to link. So first of all, I can change. So I could write filter books. There you go. And next, I can decide the behavior of the filter panel. So by default, it's fly out. So if I click on it, we have this fly out panel. Or I could choose top collapsible. And in that case, when I click on it, as you can see, our filter appears right here. So let me put it back to fly out and let's publish our work. Now, of course, here we have the filter panel, but we also have the sidebar. So in reality, you pick one or the other. Okay, so as you can see, there are many, many options in the pro version when it comes to WooCommerce. And if we scroll all the way back to the top, we can go to the design tab. And here you'll find many options like changing the product title color, the product price, the product content. So for example, take a look at the category here as I change the color, the product background. Now let's reset all of this. You can change the horizontal content alignment here in the middle or here on the right hand side. Let's put it back on the left. And next we can change the product image over style. But for that, let me load another product. So now, as you can see, when I hover over this book, I can see an alternate image. And that's because I added an image gallery, as we'll see later, just for this product, just for this book. Next, we have fade. So this is our fade effect. Zoom. And zoom fade. So a combination of both effects. Let's put it back to swap images. Next, we have our button padding. So as you can see, I can change the values. And we have our content padding, which is the space inside of each product container. Next, we can add a box shadow. So as you can see, we have our shadow here. Let's reset all of that. And if you had a box shadow, we could have a box hover shadow. So when we hover, we can have a more dramatic effect if we want or more subtle, it's up to you. Next, we have our product title font. Our product price font. And our product content font. So all in all, the pro version of Astra comes with a ton of options when it comes to WooCommerce. And just imagine if you didn't have this, you'd have to go through a developer or maybe become a developer yourself. But here it's just drag and drop pretty easy. Okay, next, let's go back to the free version, still in WooCommerce in the single product. So first let's open our shop page. 
and then let's open one of our products. So first of all, we could enable the product title, but it wouldn't really make sense here because we already have the title here in the card. So next, as usual, we have our container and sidebar layouts. So as we've already seen earlier in this video, when you use the default options, it's taking the options from the global container options. But if you want to change this specifically for the blog post, you can totally do so. So for example, full width stretch, and you could even add a sidebar. Now let's put it back to default. Now let's scroll down and here we can change the order of the elements. So now I've put the category just after my title and I can put it back with a simple drag and drop. Next, I can enable or disable any element that I want or put it right back with a mouse click. Here I can add a payments element and as you can see, it looks very professional and it's going to reassure your customers. And if I click here on the little arrow, I have the options. I can choose icon colors or I can go grayscale. And I can change the payment title. Next, you can decide which options you want to show. So let's add PayPal. You can even add your own custom payment option. So just add a title and then add an icon or an image. So let's add the me, me, me option. Next, we have our product options. So we can decide whether or not we want to enable breadcrumb. So let me remove the breadcrumb just to show you. Let's put it back on. And next you can enable shipping text. So here it says, and free shipping, and let's add just for you. Next, if you have any variations for your products, you can decide to show it inline or stacked. But here we don't have any variation, so I won't be able to show you. And by the way, if you're interested by product variations, let's say, for example, you are selling mugs. Well, the variation would be the color. You could have one green variation, one blue variation, one red variation. So if you're interested in variations, we have a nice little video that you may want to watch. And I'll put the link in the description below. Next, enable sticky add to cart. So if we toggle this on. Now, if I start scrolling down, look at the top. We have this banner here that's sticky with our add to cart button right here. We can change the placement so we can put it at the bottom and now it's right here. So whatever the user is doing when they're scrolling, they always have the add to cart button. Let's save our work and let's scroll back up. Now click on the design tab. And here we got options for the sticky add to cart colors. So let me put it back on screen. So it's here at the bottom and now I can change the text color. I can change the background color, the button text color and the button background. Let me reset all of this and let's save our work. Now let's take a look at the pro version. So still in the customizer in WooCommerce single product. Let's open one of our products. Okay, now let's scroll down. And the first thing you'll notice is that now we have more options for our product gallery. So here we have our product gallery. And in order to add a product gallery in WordPress, you wanna to go to products, all products, then open one of your products. And then on the right hand side, you will see product gallery. So you can click on add product gallery images. And next you can select which products you want to add. And if you want to add several images to your gallery, make sure you click and hold the shift key on your keyboard and then click on any image you want to add and then click on add to gallery. And as you can see now, I have more images, but I'm just going to remove all of these because I just want four for the time being and then click on update. So now we got three different layouts as I click on the thumbnails, as you can see, I can display all the images. So let me select the first one. So here we got the first image that's really big. And then we have the thumbnails here. Next, I have a vertical slider layout, which is pretty handy. So let's keep that one. Next, we can enable image zoom effect. And if we take a look at the Astra documentation, enabling this option, as the name suggests, will zoom the product image on hover. Next, we can change the image width. 
Next, we can alter our single product structure. So we already saw that we could add our payments, but we can also add extras like this text here, free shipping on orders over $50, no risk money back guaranteed, and so on. And if we click on the little arrow, we can change the title and we can change each of the items. We can also add an icon, an image, we can duplicate it and just edit the content. Next, we can disable our product navigation. So let me scroll back up. Let's add the circle option. And as you can see, we get little arrows and we can go from product to product. Okay, let's select circle outline, square, and square outline. Next, we can enable navigation preview. And for me to show you this, Let's publish our work. Now let's go back and let's refresh. And now when I hover over one of the arrows, as you can see, I can see the previous and next products. Next, if we had product variations, we could change the drop downs to buttons. But once again, for this specific example, we don't have a product variation. Next, we can enable the product description. And once we enable it, we get several options. So either horizontal, and if I scroll down, here it is. So this is the default layout. That's the way it would show in the free version. But here we can change it to vertical, accordion, and distributed. Now, if we go back to accordion, now I have another option, accordion inside summary. And now my accordion is right here. Let's set it to vertical. And next we can display upsells, related products, or display recently viewed products. Now we can also change the labels, we can change the columns, and we can change the number of products. Let's save our work. Now let's go back. Let me open this product. Let's go back. Let me open this one. Let's go back once again. And if I click on this one and scroll all the way down, you can see now I have recently viewed products with the two books I just looked at. And as usual, I can still enable my sticky add to cart. Now let's scroll back up. Let's click on the design tab. And whereas in the free version, we only add the sticky add to cart options. Now we can change general colors, like title color, category color, price color, content color, and breadcrumb color. You also have the product navigation, so we can change the color icon, the navigation color. Then we have our product description colors and all the general fonts. So you have more control. You can change the title font, category, price font, breadcrumb, content font, the category font, price font, breadcrumb font, content font. Let me reset this. Now, if we enable the sticky product summary, what it's going to do is that it's going to let you stick the product summary, even if the users are scrolling down to check the details of the product or the related products. Now, if you're wondering how to add upsells, I will link to a post in the WooCommerce documentation in the description below. Okay, next, still in the customizer in WooCommerce, let's take a look at our cart options. So click on cart, and here we can change the cart button text. So when I hover over the question mark, it says add custom text for cart button. So let me enable this, let me hit publish. And now if I go back to the front end, let's say I wanna add this product 
to the cart then go to view cart so this is our text here proceed to checkout so let me go back and let me add now let's publish and now let's refresh our page and as you can see proceed to checkout now now the next option is for enabling cross sales and once again if you want to know more about cross sales I will link to the WooCommerce documentation. Now let's take a look at the pro version. So still in the customizer in WooCommerce, let's go to cart. So on top of the enable cross sales and change cart button text that we just saw, we now have a few more options. We have enable modern cart layouts, which comes with sticky cart totals. And we have the real time quantity updater. So let's publish. And now let's go back to the front end. Let's refresh. And now let me add to cart a few of the products. Now let's click on view cart. And as I scroll, as you can see, the cart totals stay sticky. Next, the cart layout itself has changed. And if we compare it with the free version, we can see that in the free version, the layout is a bit different. The cart totals are at the bottom. Whereas here in the pro version, we have the card totals here on the right hand side with a more modern layout. And with the sticky options, it's a very efficient layout. Next, if we go back to the shop, for example, and now when we hover over the card icon to open the mini card, we can now change the quantities straight from the mini card. Now, these are the options for the WooCommerce card, but don't forget, if you want to change the way that the mini card is displayed, here in the header, all you have to do is hover over the icon and click on the little pencil icon. And now on the left hand side, don't forget you can change the cart icon. You can add a cart label. Show to display the cart count, hide the cart total label, and select the cart click action. So right now it's set to drop down, but it could be slide in. or the click could send straight to the cart page. But once again, let's put it back to drop down. Okay, next let's take a look at our checkout page. So still in the customizer in WooCommerce, you wanna click on checkout. And here you can decide if you wanna make the company name field optional or required. So for example, if you're selling only to businesses, it might be required. You can decide whether or not the address line two is optional. And once again, hidden or required. Phone field, same options, hidden, optional, or required. You can select whether or not the required field are highlighted with an asterisk. So if I turn this off, as you can see, the asterisk disappeared, but you may want to put this back on. You can select which page is your privacy policy, which page is a term and conditions page in the drop down, And if you don't have this page yet, just create it, save, refresh, and it will be available here in the drop down. And here you can also add some text about the privacy policy and it's the text that's appearing right here. Now let's take a look at the pro version. So still in the customizer in WooCommerce checkout. As you can see, the layout is different if we compare it with the free version. And here if we want, we can change the form width by playing with the slider. We can change the checkout layout. Now we set to modern, we could put it back to default which is what you would find in the free version, but let's put it back on modern. Next, you can decide whether you want a two column layout or a one column layout. And if you do this, then everything is skewed from top to bottom. Let's put it back to two column layout. Next, you can change the button text for the place order. So it could be buy now, but let's put it back to place order. Next, you can enable or disable the button padlock icon next to the place order label. And you can remove the price if you want, but it might be better that you leave it on. Next, you can decide to display product images. Now here we don't have any products, so you don't see any images, but let's save our work. Let's go to the front end and let's go to our checkout page. As you can see here, we can see all the images. Now, if I go back, and disable this, publish, back to the front end, let's refresh, and there you go, we removed all the images. But 
think it looks better with it, so let me put it back. Next, we can enable or disable modern order received. So this is what it would look like with the modern layout. And this is what it would look like without it. So you make your own opinion, but to me, this one looks cleaner and more modern. Next, we have the enable sticky order review. And as we scroll, as you can see, the right side of the page, so our right sidebar with the order stays sticky. Next, we can enable the two-step checkout. So in that case, we have two tabs. And that's interesting if you want to break down the information. So you have the first tab here. People need to fill in all the details. And then they're going to be moved on to the second tab to the last part of the purchase process. And when you enable this option, you can change all the labels for the titles and subtitles. Now you also get an enable checkout note. And now you can change the label also. So let's disable this and let's go back to our regular layout. Next, we have our display order notes. So if I disable this, as you can see, our additional information block has disappeared. So let me put it back. Next, we have our display apply coupon field. It's right here. When you click on it, you can display and add your coupon code. So you can disable this. But of course, if you want to use coupons, it's better to leave it on. Next, you can enable distraction free checkout. So now there is no top navigation and no footer, which is actually a good idea when you get to this part of the purchase process. Next, you may want to display a back to cart button. And this one would be at the bottom, just below the place order button. And of course, you can also change the label. Now, the next option is persistent checkout form data. So this retains the checkout form fields even if the visitor accidentally reloads the checkout page. And you've probably already experienced this when you want to purchase something on a website and then maybe you made a mistake, you refresh the page and all the fields are blank. So basically with this option, it's going to retain all the information. Even if the user refreshes the page, all the information is still going to be there. Now back up in the pro version, we now have a design tab. And here I can change the background color of the order summary. So for example, I could pick this color here. Let's reset this. And when it comes to the payment options, I can change the content background. It's not going to show here because we can't see it, but let me publish. Now let me refresh. And now we can see the background color we've just set. But let's go back and let's reset this. Okay, next, let's take a look at the options for the My Account page. And this is exclusive to the Pro version. So in the Customizer, you want to go to WooCommerce, My Account. And I'm going to open the My Account page. And the first option is to enable the modern layout. Now, if I disable it, let me show you. This is what you get. So it's the default WooCommerce layout. Now, let's toggle it back on. And as you can see, it's way more modern. So the next option is to enable the user Gravatar. And if you don't know what Gravatar is, basically it's one avatar for everything everywhere. Gravatar powers your public profile visible wherever you post, comment and interact online. And it's free. So in other words, if the email address you're using for your WordPress account is linked to a Gravatar account, you will see your thumbnail appearing here. Uh, the next option is enable grid view. Now I can't really show it to you here, but if we take a look at the Astra documentation, which I will link in the description below, it tells us that the grid view is for your orders and downloads. And it's basically going to provide a grid view that's more organized and way cleaner. Next, let's take a look at some miscellaneous options. So still in the customizer, let's go to WooCommerce. And then in the preview, I'm going to open my shop. And let me open this product. Next, I want to click on miscellaneous. And now take a look at the number here for the quantity. If I enable quantity plus and minus, as you can see, now we have a clean box with the plus and minus. Now let's take a look at the pro version. So first of all, we can change the input field style. So for this, let's go to the checkout page. And here we got the modern style. So let's go back to default. And you can see the difference. 
Here we got square corners, whereas if I go back to modern, it's a rounded corner design. Next, we have sale notification. So let's go back to the shop. And here we can see we have a sale badge. So we can set it to none. So now it's invisible. Or we can set it to custom string. And here by default, it gives us a macro with the value. But I could add some text. OK, <laughs> let's remove this. Next, we can change the sale bubble style. So by default, it's set to circle, but we can set it to circle outline, square, or square outline. And if you select square or square outline, and if you enable the custom border radius, now you can have rounded corners if you wish. That's a bit too much. Voila. Next, in the Pro version, we also saw that we had the quantity plus and minus, but now we can change from normal to merge or vertical. So let me open one product and pay good attention to the minus and plus box. And if I click on merged, we now have this modern style or vertical, if you prefer. So let's put it back to normal. Next, we have an option to enable steps navigation and that allows us to display steps navigation at the top of the card checkout and thank you page. So let's enable this. Let's go to the checkout page. And now we have our steps navigation here. And if we scroll down, now we have an additional option, enable step number. And there you go. Now just imagine if you wanted to do this yourself, either you need to know how to code or you need to add an additional plugin, or you need to pay a developer. But now you can do it yourself. Now let's scroll back up and let's go to the design tab. And let's go to our shop. So here we can change the product rating color, as you can see right here. We can change our sales badge text color, as well as the background color. Let's reset this. Now let's open one of our posts. And here we can change the background color of our quantity colors box. We can also change the hover color as well as the text colors. So now when we hover over the element, our changes are reflected. Let's reset this. And next we can change our steps navigation styling. So let's go back to our checkout page. And here we have default, but we can change it to small, smaller, and that's looking good. Now we can also change our steps font case. So by default, it's as you can see here on screen, but we can set it to uppercase. Let's put it back to default. And as always, let's save our work. Okay, back in the free version, and this time we want to take a look at product images. So still in the customizer, go to WooCommerce, product images, and our first option is the main image width. Now, if you hover over the question mark, it says image size used for the main image on single product pages. These images will remain uncropped. The next option is our thumbnail width, which is what you see right now here on the shop page. So right now it's set to 300 and the ratio is 1, 1. So images will be cropped into a square. Next, you can set it to custom. And in this case, by default, the ratio is 4, 3, but we could put 16, 9 and a bunch of other ratios. Basically anything you want, you can do it here. Now the next option is uncropped. Images will display using the aspect ratio in which they were uploaded. So if you uploaded all images in the same aspect ratio, that may be a good option. So let's do this. And as you can see, it's much better and makes more sense because here we're selling books. So let's save our work. Okay, next let's take a look at this store notice option. So still in the customizer in WooCommerce, click on store notice. And all you have to do is click on enable store notice. And as you can see, the store notice is here at the top. And this is particularly interesting either when you're setting up a demo store, so you're still building the website, or maybe you have a sale and you want to draw attention to it. 
So you can change the color to match your branding. You can change the text color also, but here white was better. And then you can decide where you want it. So here it said at the top. So as we scroll, it sits at the top. Or you could select hang over the top. So in this case, it sits on top of everything. And here we have our header. So now it sits on top of the header. Whereas if we select the top, it's overlapping the header. And next you can select bottom. Now, bear in mind that as we saw earlier on, you can also have a add to cart sticky banner that can sit at the top or at the bottom. So make sure these don't overlap. So you have the sticky add to cart, you have the store notice, and if you have the pro version of Astra, you can also have the sticky header. Okay, so let's disable this and let's save our work. Okay, if you've made it up to here, congratulations. But now you may be wondering, well, how do I set up WooCommerce? like the payment, the taxes, and so on. Now, as you may imagine, this is beyond the scope of this video, which is already very, very long. But if you need help with this, I put a link to a resource in the description below. Now, throughout this video, I've shown you options for both the free and the pro versions of Astra. But now let's take a look at the additional features that come exclusively with the pro version of Astra and that are found outside of the customizer. And the first feature we're gonna take a look at is the mega menu. So in WordPress, you want to go to Appearance, Menus, and let's say that we want to add a mega menu under Blog. So the first step is to open Blog, and next click on Astra Menu Settings, and enable Mega Menu. Now there are a bunch of options, so we'll take a look at this in a moment. Click on Save Changes, then let's close this. And next, let's add the pages we want to add under Blog. So I'm going to pick a few pages here just for demonstration purposes. And I'm just going to place them right under a blog. Now let's save our menu. And if we go back to the front end, let's refresh. And now, as you can see, we have our mega menu here, but we can tweak it. So let's go back. Let's open the blog menu item. Click on Astra menu settings. And now where it says mega menu width, you can change the width to either menu container width, full width, full width stretch, or custom width. So let's try the options. Menu container width, save changes. Let's refresh. And as you can see now, it's much narrower. Full width. And there you go. Full width stretch. Still full width, but the content is stretched all across. And custom width. So let's say we want it to be 200 pixels. And there you go. So let's put it to full width. Next, we can decide whether or not we want an icon. So we can either upload our own icon, but we're not going to do that, or we can pick an existing icon. So let me pick that one. Let's save changes. Let's go back, refresh. And as you can see, we got our icon here in the navigation. We can put it before or after the menu label we can change the size and the icon spacing with the word that's before or after it. We can also add a menu highlight label. So if you want to add a label, let me just add mega. Save changes. Let's refresh. And now as you can see, we got a mega label. Now let me remove this. And next you have the design tab. And basically, you can completely style the background. So we could use a color. Or we could use a gradient. Let's save changes. Let's refresh. And there you go. Let's go back. Or we could decide to add a background image, for example, from the media library, but we're not going to do this right now. Next, we can change our heading colors. 
text and link colors. We can decide how we want our icon to be viewed, whether stacked or framed, change its primary color. We can decide to set dividers, either solid dotted dash double or no divider at all. We can set top border width, column width, row width, top border and column divider colors, highlight labels, margins and padding. And if you want to make the mega menu taller, you could use this. So for example, 200, let's save. Let's go back, let's refresh. And as you can see, it's way taller because we are more inner spacing. Now I'm just scratching the surface here and of course we can make it look way better, but let me show you something else. So in WordPress, go to pages, add new, and we're gonna call this page mega menu template. Next, click on the plus sign. And since we have the Spectra plugin installed, we can now add a container. So let's pick this layout. Next, click on the plus sign and we're gonna look for a widget called Pose Grid, which is a Spectra widget. And as you can see, now we have a Pose Grid from the blog. So here we're quickly gonna change some of the options in the right panel. So we want just three posts per page. And as we scroll down, let's go to content and let's disable the date, the comments, the meta icon the excerpt. Next, let's click on read more link and let's even disable the read more link. Next, click on the plus sign and we want to add a buttons widget. So let me grab this one from Spectra and I'm quickly going to style it. So in the right panel, go to the style tab, click on spacing. I'm just going to unlink the margin values and I want to give it some top margin, 60 pixels so that there is enough spacing. Next, let me click on the second button and I'm just going to remove this button so I have only one left. And here I can change the text to all blog posts. Great. And now let's click on the content tab and here I can paste the link to my blog page. Then click on publish and publish again. Okay, let's go back to our menu in appearance menus. And now I'm going to remove all the pages we previously added under a blog. And let me add the new page we just created, mega menu template. Click add to menu and let me place it underneath blog so that it's like a sub menu. Now let me click on the little arrow, click on Astra menu settings, and here, once again, I have general options. So just like for the previous one, I could show it as heading. I could hide the menu label, disable the link, add an icon or upload an icon. But here I want to focus on the content source. So where it says content source, I'm going to choose template. But take a look. We could have chosen custom text or widget. But in this case, we're going to use a template. And then here I have a second drop down, and I can search in pages, posts, and reusable blocks but I know the name of my page was Mega Menu Template. So let me start typing and there it is. Now, as usual, we have a design tab here, but for the moment, let's click on Save Changes and don't forget to save the menu. And now if we go back, let's refresh. And as you can see now, we have our newly created Mega Menu. Now, of course, we still have the styles from the previous one, so that's very easy to fix. Let's go back. Let's open the blog page, Astra menu settings, design tab. We can change the color. Let's say black. Let's save changes. Let's close this. Now we didn't change the structure of our menu, so we don't have to save, but if you want to be sure, you can always save. Then let's go back and refresh. And voila, now we have our custom mega menu. And if you've put the link to your blog post, when you click on blog post, there you go. So once again, only scratching the surface here, but as you can see, it's a very powerful feature. Next, let's talk about page headers. So in WordPress, you want to go to Astra dashboard. Then you want to scroll down to Astra Pro modules. And here you will find page headers. Now, if you forgot how to use it or need access to the documentation, just click on the documentation link and just go through the page. Now back in the Astra dashboard, if you want to access the page headers, just click on settings. 
Next, click on add new. And basically the page headers are a very powerful feature and it's all going to be clear in just a moment when I showcase what you can do with it. So first of all, let's give it a name, page header one. Then we need to choose a layout. So let's keep the default layout, page header center aligned. We can choose to display the breadcrumb, select the title text color, select the breadcrumb text color. We have the link color, link cover color, the size, the background, and so on. So here we're going to select an image. So let me pick this one, click on select, and then you get some self-explanatory options. Like for example, overlay background color. So you can add an overlay color just on top of the image. Next, you can decide whether you want to add a parallax effect on desktop and mobile, desktop or just mobile. So let's scroll back up. And then if we click on the site header tab, we can decide whether or not we want to merge the page header with the site header. And if we do, we can select the primary menu. But for the moment, we're not going to use this because I just want to show you how the page header looks first and then we'll merge both. So next we have the display rules tab and here it's very powerful because basically you can decide where you want to show this page header. Could be on all singular, like all single blog posts, could be on all archives, could be on the 44 page, which is the error page, when one page is not found on your website, on the search page, blog post, and so on. You get the idea, it's very, very powerful. So for the time being, let's put it on the entire website. And by the way, you can combine this rule with other rules. You could add an exclusion rule, say, okay, I want it on the entire website, but I don't want it on one specific page. So for that, I will go to the very bottom, specific pages, and say, okay, I don't want this on the contact page. And you can add as many display rules and exclusion rules as you wish. So once again, very powerful. Next, you get a user role. So you could say, I want this for all users, just logged in users, logged out, or by role, administrator, editor, and so on. Okay, so let's publish. Now let's go back and let me refresh our website. And as you can see now, we have our page header with our image here in the background, plus the styles that we chose. And as I scroll, as you can see, we have this parallax effect. Now you can't really see it because of the overlay. So let me go back. Let me go back to page header and let me deactivate the overlay. And next, let's update. Let's go back to the front end and let me refresh. Okay, now it's easier to see the parallax effect. Okay, now let's take a look at if we merge it with the side header. So all you have to do is select this option and then you get some more options. But for the time being, let me click on update. Let's go to the front end, let's refresh. And as you can see now, it's merged with the header. So it's one and the same. Now it doesn't really look good because you can't really read here with the text, but we can take care of this. So first of all, we could change the logo because if you go back, the logo is dark. And let's say we want another logo, a lighter one. So let's select this option. Let's select our logo. Once again, we could have a different logo for Retina devices, but we don't want that. So for the width, let's select 180. Now we could have just changed the background overlay color, but it's just to show you all the options that we have. Now let's change the link text color to white and for the link hover color, let's pick this color here. Okay, you get the ID and of course you get many more options, but they are self-explanatory. So let me go back up and update. Let's go back and now let's refresh. And as you can see, it's now way cleaner and more readable. Of course, we can make it look better, but you get the idea. And if you remember, we had an exclusion rule for the contact page. So let's go to contact and there you go. It's not active on the contact page, but if I go to any other page like about author, as you can see, even the home page, it's set everywhere. And that's because here in the display rules, I set it to the entire website minus the contact page. So as you can see, it's a very powerful feature that allows you to add any amount of headers that you want. You could have a different header for any page on the website, even for different blog posts.
but for the time being I'm going to deactivate this so you can either completely delete the page header by going back to the page header dashboard and delete the page header or you can simply click on the status so right now it's published if you click on edit and set it to draft for example click on ok update and now if we go back and refresh voila it's gone and we're back to normal okay next if you like page headers you're gonna love custom layouts because as the name hints with custom layouts we have full creativity with your Astra Pro layouts so to access it you can go to Astra dashboard then scroll down to the Astra Pro modules once again you can open the documentation or click on settings to access custom layouts or if you wish you can just go to Astra custom layouts next click on add new and here you can decide the type of custom layout that you want to add so you could add a header a footer 44 page hooks or inside post page content now to showcase the possibilities I'm going to choose the indie post page content so first of all let me give it a name so let's call it my custom layout and for the sake of this tutorial let's make it simple so click on type to choose a block click on the plus sign and I'm going to select a block called cover so here I can choose an image I'm going to choose an image from the media library and let me select this one click on select and here I can write a title let's write hurry up okay and next you want to click on the Astra settings icon and here you can decide to change where you want to show it but for the time being let's keep it inside post page content next you have the location settings sub tab but we'll see that in a moment and we're going to focus now on the display and user conditions so just like we saw in the page headers segment of this video now we can decide where we want to display it so once again let's decide we want to show it on the entire website and let's say we want to add an exclusion rule and not display it on a specific page so once again I will choose specific target here at the bottom and I don't want to show it on my contact page now just like previously you can add several rules and you can decide to also add several exclusion rules now last but not least you can decide to display for users all or for logged in for logged out or depending on the user role now once you're all set click on return to post and next we want to go back to the location settings here we can set the location on the post or the page depending on certain options so it could be after a certain number of blocks so for example let's say after one block we want to display this custom layout so let's click on update now let's go back let's refresh our page and now as we scroll after the first block which is the main hero block here here is our custom layout so once again very powerful feature you can totally control where you want it to show and you can combine several options now let's go to our about author page let's scroll down and as you can see after our first block which is all of this because it's a container here is our custom layout now let's go to contact and no it's not there and that's for a reason because we added that exclusion rule that we wanted that custom layout to show everywhere except on the contact page now to be sure let's check another page and there you go it's here after the first block now let's go back and in the layout options let's say you want to show it in the header let's click on update and now let's refresh our page and as you can see it replaced our header let's go back let's select footer and let's refresh our header is back but now a footer has been replaced now the 44 page is the default page when someone tries to access a page that does not exist on your website but now the next feature is very powerful hooks so you have to think about hooks like total control on where you want to show your custom layout and that happens here in the action drop down now if you look at the name you might be a bit scary but it's very self-explanatory where do you want to show this layout in the head in the header so for example if I put the header before click on update now let's refresh and there you go it comes before our header so it's like really in plain English so let's go back let's pick 
header after. Update. Let's refresh. And guess what? It comes right after our header. Now let me show you one more. Let's scroll down and let's set it to footer before. Now let's refresh our page. And as you may have guessed, it comes right before our footer. Now, if we take a look at the dropdown, there are so many options. Options for WooCommerce, options for the footer, for the content, you name it. And it's in plain English. So that makes it a super powerful solution to have total control over your layouts for your website built with Astra. Next, you also have a priority option. So let's say that you have several custom layouts. Well, you can tell which one has to appear first. So number one would be the top priority, number two, and so on. Next, we have a spacing option. So let's say we want to add 100 pixels at the bottom. Let's update. Let's go back and refresh. So as you can see here, now we have 100 pixels between the custom layout and the footer because we added 100 pixels at the bottom. Next, we already saw the display and user conditions. If you recall, it was this screen. And then we have our device visibility. So we could decide we only want to show it on the desktop. So then we would deactivate tablet and mobile and so on. You just decide where you want to show it. Next, we have date and time conditions. And that's very powerful because you can time that event. You could say the start date, the end date, and even set your time zone to be sure that things happen when you want it to happen. So the possibilities are endless. Let's say that you have a special promotion for Christmas, Easter, Valentine's Day or whatever, you could really add this custom layout and time it. And then when the promotion is over, this custom layout would automatically disappear at the date and time that you've set. Now, if you want to delete or disable this custom layout, just go back to WordPress and here you can enable or disable or you can trash it if you know you're not going to use it. But here, let me just disable it because I may want to reuse it later. And you don't need to click on the save button because it's automatically done. And now if we go back and if you refresh, it's gone. Next, let's talk about another powerful Astro Pro feature, white label. So in WordPress, you want to go to Astra dashboard, and then you want to scroll down and here you find white label. So if you click on documentation, it says that white label branding is the ability to rename and present a product or a plugin as your own. This helps you hide the actual identity of the theme and plugins use and lets you use your brand name instead. So for example, if you're an agency, that's very, very powerful. Or maybe you're not an agency, you could be a freelancer or just building websites for someone else. So in the Astra dashboard, scroll down to the Astra Pro modules and where you see white label, click on settings. So here I can give it an agency author name. I could add the agency URL, the agency license link. Next, the theme name. Let's call it me, me, me theme a theme description. We can add a theme screenshot URL. And for that, I'm just going to open the media library in a new tab. Click on add new, click on select. Then I'm going to add my image. And then all I have to do is click on the image. And here you find a button where it says copy URL to clipboard. So just click this. It's copied. Then I can go back to my white label settings page and paste the URL here. Same thing for the theme icon URL. And next we have the Astra Pro branding. So let's call it me, me, me pro plugin description. And we can even brand these starter templates, me, me, me starter templates. So you want to save all that information and make sure you go back to white label and enable. And as you can see now, the white label option has disappeared from the settings, but fear not because I'm going to show you how you can access it. But now if you noticed here where it used to say start a template, it now says me, 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 start a template. Nice. Now let's go to appearance themes. And as you can see, the active theme is now the me, me, me theme with our custom thumbnail. And if I click on it, here we see our description. This is the best theme ever. We even have the version and we can enable auto updates. 
So of course it's still Astra, but you've completely rebranded it to your own branding. Now, as I showed you earlier on, if we go back to what now says me, me, me theme instead of Astra, let's click on dashboard. And if you click on settings where the white label option was, it's not there anymore. So let's go back to the welcome tab. And it's not even there anymore in the me, me, me pro modules. But like I said, fear not. So let's go to plugins. And as you may notice, Astra Pro is now me, me, me pro. So now all we have to do is to deactivate Astra Pro and we can reactivate it. And now if we go back to the settings, it still says me, me, me pro, but let's click on settings. And now if you scroll down, you have access to wide label once again, and you can change the information here as you wish. And once you enable it, then it will go back to hiding the wide label options. And the reason is simple. If for some reason you don't want to show the Astra branding, then you don't want the people using the website to be able to find that information easily. But now you know how to find those settings again. Now, what about additional third party tools? So once again, in WordPress, you want to go to Astra dashboard. And now if we scroll down, as you can see, we've got additional third party tools like Easy Digital Downloads, Learn Dash, and Lifter LMS. Now you cannot enable these options unless you've installed those plugins. And as always, once enabled, you'll find a link to the documentation if you need help. Okay, great. Now you know how to customize your website to match your brand, but how do you actually edit the content? So earlier on, I told you that we'd be using our free plugin called Spectra. And the good news is that Spectra was automatically installed and activated once you imported the ready-made design. Now the Spectra plugin comes as a response to common problems and limitations of the WordPress core blog editor, also known as Gutenberg like the lack of layout options, the limitations of mobile responsive options, and more. Spectra is built on top of Gutenberg and comes with many customizable blogs that help you craft beautiful websites in no time. So basically, Spectra's mission is to help build ultra-fast modern websites easy enough for beginners to use. And it's doing so by boosting performance, ensuring compatibility with the native WordPress blocks, and all of that with a very light and intuitive learning curve. And best of all, Spectra works with all the themes and plugins developed for the WordPress core. So if you want to know more about Spectra, you find a link to this video in the description below. But let me quickly show you how to edit your homepage. So in WordPress, you want to go to Pages, All Pages. Then you want to hover over the name of the page you want to edit and click on edit. Now another way to do the exact same thing would be to hover over the little house here at the top left corner, click on visit site. Then you can browse on the website and when you're on the page you want to edit, look at the top in the top toolbar and click on edit page. And you will land here. So these are the two ways you can initiate editing a page. So now let me show you how to edit content. So let's scroll down. So when it comes to text, it's pretty straightforward. Just click here, select the text you want to change and start typing as easy as that. Next, here is an image. Let me click on it. And once it's selected, we have the options here on the right hand side. Now this is a spectral widget, so it comes with a lot of options, but here we just want to change the image. So click on change image and I'm going to upload a new image. Click on select. And there you go. Now I could also add a new element. So here with my image selected, I click on the plus sign and let's say I want to add a block quote. And here is my block quote. And once again, if I click on the block quote, I have all the options on the right hand side in this panel. And usually we have a general tab where we set the general options. So for example, here for the tweet button, let me select bubble link or classic. So let's put it back to bubble. Here in the style tab, as you may have guessed, I can change anything that has to do with the style. So for example, let me change the border to dotted and it shows right here. I can also change the thickness. I can change the color. And basically I can style pretty much everything. You can even change the hover state. So now I want to hover over the border, as you can see, it goes black. Now, once again, it's very well done and most of the options are pretty self-explanatory. And then we have the advanced tab. So most of the time you're not going to worry about this, but 
Basically, you can decide to hide on desktop, tablet, and mobile. These are called the responsive options. We've already seen this in the customizer. And the rest of the options are more advanced, as the name says. Namely, the Z-Index, which you probably won't use, but just imagine that every piece of content on a page is like a layer. So basically, the Z-Index is going to be which index is the top. It's going to be the top layer. I meant top layer. And next we have the advanced tab where we can add HTML anchor and additional CSS classes. And we already talked about HTML anchor earlier in this video when we looked in the customizer at the smooth scroll ID option. So once you're happy with the changes, click on update. And now if we go to the front end, let's refresh our page. And now as we scroll down, as you can see, now we've changed the image, we've changed the text. And here at the bottom, we added a block quote. And when I hover over the border, the color changes. So let's go back. And we've already talked about this earlier in this video, but just as a reminder, you can click on the extra settings. And here you can change many of the options. So here we have the content layout and here we have the sidebar. So you could decide on a box layout, content box, full width stretched or narrow width. And in the same way, you could add a right sidebar or a left sidebar. Next, you could decide to disable the header and the footer. And here in the header rows, you could decide to disable the primary header, the mobile header. You could decide to enable or disable the transparent header or enable or disable the sticky header. Because yes, if you remember, the sticky header is an Astro Pro exclusive feature. Next, let's take a look at how to create a new blog post. So in WordPress, you want to go to Posts, Add New. Then you want to give it a title. Let's call it my post. Next, click on the plus sign to add a block and there are many blocks you can add, but here I'm just going to keep it simple and I'm going to paste some text content. Now you have several options here, but I'm going to leave it at default. Next, you want to click on the post tab and here you can change the post format, but I'm going to keep it as standard because this is a standard blog post. But if you wanted to add a video, a quote or a link, you would choose the appropriate content but most of the time you're going to use standard. Next, if you have several writers on the blog, several accounts, you're going to choose the appropriate account. Here I only have one. Then the categories. So currently I only have one category, but I could add a new one. Call it news. Click on add category. And now it's part of the news category. And in the same way, you could add subcategories. So for example, very new. Just select the parent category, news. Click on add. And now you can see the hierarchy here. Next, you could add some tags, which is another way to categorize the content. Let's add the fresh tag and just type enter. Next, very important, if you want an image, you need to add a featured image. So set featured image. Let me click here and let me select this image. Set featured image. Next, you can decide if you want to show an excerpt or not but we've seen we have other options in the customizer with Astra. And next for the discussion, do you want to allow comments and pingbacks and trackbacks? So next click on publish. And here, let's take a look at the free version. And in this one, I showcase the sidebar. And as you can see, it's looking beautiful. And when I click on the post, looking good. Okay, next, if you installed a starter template that did not come with a blog, how do you set up one? And how do you link to your blog in your menu? Now I've already mentioned this earlier in this video, but just in case you haven't seen it, here it goes. So the way it works is that you're going to create a page, that page is going to be empty, and you need to tell WordPress, this page is going to be the blog page that Astra is going to be using. So first of all, let's create our page. So for that, you want to go to pages, add new, and I'm going to call it new blog. Now let me publish this page. And before I show you how to tell WordPress which page is the blog, first we need to add it in our navigation. So for that, you want to go to Appearance, Menus. And here in the left panel, we can see our new blog page we just created. So I'm going to select this page, click on Add to Menu, and I'm going to drag and drop it right after the blog page. Not within, but just after at the same level. And then click on Save Menu. Now let me refresh this page. And as you can see, now we have blog and new blog. So let me click on blog. And this is actually the page we're currently viewing with our blog posts. 
And now if I click on new blog, which is the page I just created, it's completely empty. And that's totally normal. So let's go back. And now you want to go to settings, reading. And here where it says post page, you want to change this to new blog. Then click on save changes. Now let's go back. And now if I click on the blog page, which has been our blog page up to here, it's empty. But if I click on new blog, voila, this is our blog page archive. So this is how you set up your blog page, as simple as that. Congratulations for making it to this point in the video, because now the Astra theme should have no secrets for you. Whether you use the free or the pro version, you should now be confident to install and set up Astra and install a starter templates demo in just a few clicks. You've also learned how to use the customizer and the many options that come with Astra and Astra Pro. Now, Astra will always be free and you can build amazing websites with it. But if you want to take your website to the next level with more options to fine tune your website exactly the way you want, consider going pro. And if you're interested, you find a link in the description below. And if you appreciate the work behind this video and want more of this type of content, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and let us know in the comments which other type of content you'd like to see on this channel. See you in the next one.